Plaque Attackers. This is actually a game that I have released. I'm going to do a teach you how to set it up, teach you how to play it, and play a sample game as well. Uh, this should be fairly easy to catch on to. Uh, it's not a very difficult game. It's actually a very easy game. Uh, it's not easy in difficulty though. It is, it is hard to win, but I mean it's easy to play. So first off for setup, I'm going to set up the threats. For each threat, we take a threat set, which is a white and a green die. And I'm going to roll those dice. And then I'm going to take these and go place them onto the threat. Uh, actually, before I place these, I need to set up my character. I forgot to do that. Uh, for setting up my character, I have five cubes of my color. I'm playing green. So, before I know what's coming at me, I need to choose one of these to be at three. One to be at two, and the other two to be at one. Fame always starts at zero, so I'm going to start off by putting the green cube on zero. Uh, I'm going to... I think I'm going to make my character good at empathy. So I'm going to take three... Or a cube, place on number three for empathy. I'm going to take a cube, place on number two for combat, because I want to be also decent at combat. And my subterfuge is going to be one. And my contacts is going to be one. Uh, this will change throughout the game, but for for now, that's my starting. My player pawn will be going on the gums up here, on the gum space. All right, now I'm gonna take a threat set, and I'm gonna roll these. So for my first one, I got the contact at zero or at normal difficulty. Whenever you roll blank on a green, that means normal difficulty. Uh, the green guy or the purple guy here is the contact. Plaque Lord, which is down here. Uh, you fight him with contacts. I don't have any contacts, so he's gonna be a hard one for me to get rid of. He's probably gonna be a. T I'm probably gonna just start building my contacts up if I have a chance. Next set, I got a blank, so that means I'm just gonna basically have a a resting point there that I'm not gonna have to worry about something coming to get me. So I roll the next one. All right, this one here, I got the empathy guy and times two for easy. So I have an easy combat against empathy up here which means I get to double my empathy score whenever I attack him. Next one. Another contact guy coming. So contacts are going to be a hard hitter in this game. And he's also at regular difficulty. Next set. Another empathy guy. This one's a hard empathy. So I have my empathy before I attack him. So that's going to be a difficult one to get rid of. I probably won't be able to get rid of that. It's probably going to hit me. And last one. And I got a blank for the end. So I got a couple rests in there. So it's not too bad. Next thing I do is I take this white cube. And I place it on the number one for survival. My goal is to get in the white cube all snake in the whole way down. And off the track at number 32. If I can do that, I win. If any... Eight teeth next to any plaque lord are all completely filled, I lose. So that's the basics. That's the setup. Now we go to the, the actual play. Alright, so turn one. At the end of the turn, this is going to slide off and bad stuff's going to happen. And I'll go over that when it happens. But right now, I need to think of what I want to do. My options right now I can move back to training. Or, I can combat any of these dice because I'm in the gums. So, my options are right now, if I combat contacts, I would have to roll less than a 1. Lucky for me, if I roll 1 on my 10-sided dice, that is considered defeating. So, I will beat it. I'll beat any of these if I roll a 1. If I roll 10, that's always failing. And you always have to roll under whatever your skill is. So, if I fight the empathy doubled, my empathy right now is 3, so if I fight him, my empathy is considered to be 6, so I'd have to roll 5 or less. I have a 50-50 shot on this die, I think that's what I'm going to do. If I beat him, I get to roll the trading dice. What the trading dice do is, if I roll doubles on here, anything I roll doubles on, I get to boost one of my stats. Now if I was playing a 2 or more player game, if I roll doubles, I could boost somebody else's stat. But you can only do that if you defeat somebody. If I get it through the trading ground, it has to go to me. 
So my first option, I'm going to attack this guy right here. So I'm just going to move him up so I know I'm attacking him. And I roll the 10-sider. I rolled a 5. Double my empathy is 6. So 5, I do successfully defeat him. So I take both of these dice off. I roll the 3 blues. This is what I got for my roll. I have 2 subterfuge. Meaning I gain 1 point in subterfuge. So now my subterfuge is up to 2. Now if I rolled this symbol here, that's a wild. But I did not roll that. Alright, next thing is all these dice slide down one space. So this slides off first off. Since we have a contact, I take one of these little black cubes and place it on the teeth. This tooth has just been rotted. Since he hit me and it did damage to me, or first off, I did defeat this guy. I did defeat one of these. When you defeat someone, your survival also goes up. When a plaque lord comes off the board, survival goes up as well. So my survival's up to three now, but I got a tooth rotted. And now what I do is I re-roll the difficulty die. So this one's a times two easy. It goes to the end of the line. And since I didn't defeat him, he goes with it. Now, he's not going to go directly at the end because the person I already beat, I'm going to re-roll and it's going to go there. So let me re-roll that one first. So this time it's combat with a times two. And that's going to slide right in here in the path. Then all these dice slide out one space. Notice how I have one off the board. This one who's not on the board, I cannot encounter him until he comes into these spaces. I have an empty one here because I fought one earlier, and they don't slide into place. It'll give me basically a breather that I can catch up on my breath a little bit if something bad's about to happen. Alright, so now we move to the next turn. Uh, each turn's the same, so I just keep going until I lose or I win. I'm deciding to move back to the training ground, because right now there's not a whole lot I think I can do against the people that are coming up into the, into the track. Uh, this is a blank, it slides off. Now, notice my only action this turn was moving one space backwards. So this slides off, and these all slide forward. Notice survival did not move, because it was a blank that came off. Then let me re-roll it. Alright, the star here means fame. So, if I defeat a star, I get to move my fame up one. Fame can do a couple different things. If I have 5 fame, which through all my playtests I haven't acquired 5 fame, but I haven't really tried for fame. I've been kind of avoiding it most of the time. I usually stay around 1 or 2 fame uh, because they're good for modified dice. Uh, 5 fame can remove one of these black cubes. So you might get into a dire uh, situation that you want to spend some fame, and you can do it with each other, so different players can spend different amounts of fame up to the five that you need. Other things fame can do is spending a point of fame will lower your die roll by one. You can never lower the d10 lower. If it's if you roll a 10, you miss no matter what you lower it to, so you, there's no point to spend it at that point. But if I roll a nine, I can spend a bunch of fame to keep bumping it down. I do have a breather this turn, but since I'm on the trading ground, all I can do is roll these three blue dice. So let me go ahead and roll them. I got doubles on the hearts. Really doesn't do anything in single player. If this was, if I was playing with a friend or two, if anybody who's in the hospital would move to the trading ground. But for right now, those didn't help me. So I just simply move forward. And all of these slide up. I don't feel confident fighting any of the plaque leaders that are there. I think I will attack the fame though. Now with fame, I can choose empathy, combat, subterfuge, or contacts to attack it. And if this is a times two easy, I'm going to do times two on my empathy, I need to roll a five or less. And I roll a five, so I got just enough to beat the fame, so I get to remove that. Now when I defeat a fame, my survival moves up. If, I, if a fame slides off the track, survival doesn't move. It's only if I defeat it. So since I defeated fame, this moves up one, I get to roll the trading dice. All three different symbols, so nothing happens. So unfortunately, I don't gain anything. 
contact comes off. He rots another one of my teeth. He's going to be trouble. I reroll the difficulty this time. He is difficult. So he's a half. And I reroll this one, and we have another empathy guy coming through here. So everything slides up one. And I was hit, so that slide down. Well, these are all the same difficult for me, so I'm going to attempt to, well, except for the one at the very end. So I attempt to take out this guy here, and I need to roll a one. I roll a ten. When you fail, you roll the black die. It'll tell you where you end up. Ooh, in this case, I roll the guy laying on the stretcher. I go the whole way to the back of the hospital, which is intensive care. So it's going to take me to the hospital, it seems. Alright, the empathy guy comes off. He melts one of my teeth. Everything slides forward. The empathy guy stays at the back, but I reroll the difficulty. And it's a times two, so that's one that I could probably beat. Alright, on my turn this time, I have to roll the hospital die, since I'm in the hospital. So I got the heart with all the little hearts around it. That moves me out to the training ground. If I would have got the heart with a plus sign, it would only move me one space. And if I got the little combat guy, I'd have to fight him. And if I fa if I successfully fight him, I move one space. All right, uh, this blank comes off. Lucky for me, there's a couple blanks in there, and I get another blank in the back. I'm in the training ground, so all I can do is roll the blue dice. And again, I roll nothing. But I do move forward, and I'm getting hit on combat this time. So now I'm starting to get people from all over the board attacking me. So I kept the combat guy since he hit me, and he goes to the back of the line. And I re-rolled his difficulty, which is blank this time. Um, I'm going to go after this times two empathy guy, because I think I can take him. Eight. That will not take him. So I get to roll the black die again. And I rolled gums, so I get to stay where I'm at. But this contact guy hits me again, moving me up to seven on the survival. I'm not doing too hot here, being that I just got another tooth rotted. Alright. Well, let's try this empathy guy again. I think I can take him. A six. Now, normally a six would fail. I'm going to spend my one point of fame to make this a five. And since he's empathy times two, I needed a five or better. So with my fame, I defeat him. Which will bump my survival up. And let me roll the trading dice. And I'm just hoping against hope for some contacts here. I got some more subterfuge. So the one guy who, never, the one guy who hasn't come out yet, I'm getting pretty good at fighting.